Please be advised that this video is for the sole purpose of entertainment. Any views of purely my own are subjective and may not necessarily be true. I do, however, do extensive research for all of my videos. All photos have been found on the public domain. I am using them under the Fair Use and Fair Dealing guidelines. I urge everybody to do their own research. Well, hello, it's Murky Meg here. It's Saturday the 3rd of October and you might be aware because I've spoken about it on a regular basis but Megan is taking the mail on Sunday to court for various reasons but predominantly they are with regards to them printing her extracts of her father's letter that she sent to him. Now last week the judge allowed the request for the mail on Sunday for Omid Scooby's book Finding Freedom to be allowed to be used as evidence or at least them to be able to put some claims and counterclaims forward to Megan's team of why the fact that this book has so many interesting tidbits that could have only come from either Megan, Harry or cooperating friends. Now we all know that Megan herself doesn't directly speak to the papers unless they've got something to sell or promote but she does it via her friends. And what the Mail on Sunday are trying to prove in asking for Finding Freedom to be allowed to be used as evidence in the court case is that they believe there are 49 instances in this book that could have only come from Meghan's and Harry's camp and you can bet your bottom dollar that they would not have let anybody talk to Omid Scooby or Kath Carolyn Durant without their authority. It's just a no-no isn't it? We are well aware that Megan's friends don't speak publicly unless that they have the green light from the couple themselves. So I'm going to go into detail of those 49 instances that the Mail on Sunday believe that this shows that Meghan and Harry cooperated directly or indirectly to the contents of Finding Freedom. The first one, personal correspondence between Meghan and her mother, Doria Ragland. There are numerous instances within the book that go into great detail about how Doria was feeling, what Doria said, and what those two colluded with. Now, how on earth could anybody know what Doria and Megan had discussed in these correspondence? So it's either come from Megan or Doria herself. There's also details of Doria's employment and educational history. Now, I myself have tried to search numerous times for information on Doria herself, and it's extremely tricky. It's as if things have just disappeared off the internet. So, hmm, you've got to wonder how on earth the authors got this type of information. The Mail on Sunday also dispute the fact that there's Megan's personal conversations with a co-worker at Soup Kitchen in Los Angeles. Now, I've looked on the internet for this and she did, in fact, give an interview in 2017 in the book Game Changers, Success Secrets from Inspirational Women, Changing the Game and Influencing the World. World. She reveals her whole thought process of volunteering at the soup kitchen. She said, I started working at the soup kitchen in Skid Row of Los Angeles when I was 13 years old. And the first day I felt really scared. I was young and it was rough and raw down there. And though I was with a great volunteer group, I was just felt overwhelmed. And then three years later, her theology teacher, Maria Hollier described her own experience of volunteering at the soup kitchen. She said that Megan approached her after class and said, you know, when I was 13, I volunteered in the kitchen on Skid Row and I was really scared, but I really, really want to go back. How did you do it? How do you go there? So in this instance, I've literally just found that on the internet. So the authors could very well have just done a simple Google search and found that information. So that particular point is rather shady and that probably won't stand up in court because the information is there from an interview that Megan had already done in 2017.
2017. Now, they also say that there is details of her weekly routine while at Northwestern University. Well, this could very well have come from people that were with her at Northwestern University. The authors could have sought them out and discussed that with them. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's come from Megan, but it could very well have come from somebody that she was at university with. The Mail and Sunday also say that the book went into detail of how Megan felt about having to shoot sex scenes while she was a struggling actor in 2008. This refers to the now infamous 90210 scene that has people kind of raising their eyebrows. But, you know, she was a struggling actress and possibly she did feel a little bit nervous. Maybe Omid and Caroline are using creative license and twisting and bending the truth, how they would feel about it or how the majority of people would feel about it. But you've got to remember, Megan Markle was an actress and this is just what you've got to do. I've looked for this online and the only thing that it really refers to is the question of could this particular scene come back to haunt her? The only real indication on Google of what, how she felt about this scene refers to the book Finding Freedom. So again, I think that one needed to have come from Megan's camp herself because how else would they have known unless they're using creative license and just fluffing around the scenes a bit. Please excuse the pun. The newspaper also says that the book claims to have details of her feelings around her relationship with her ex-husband, Trevor, who has never spoken publicly about their marriage. And that is true. He hasn't said anything negative. He hasn't really said anything at all with regards to Meghan Markle. So again, that might not have come from Meghan directly, but I think it would have come from her very close friends. Again, there is detailed account of Megan's relationship with Corey. Now, that was the person that she was in a relationship with, and there are questions over whether or not there was an overlap. The book doesn't actually address those questions, but never mind. It says that at first she was attracted to Corey's good looks, but soon she was drawn to his sensitivity, kind demeanour, and entrepreneurial skills. And of course, food was a huge connection. He opened up her eyes to food on a whole different Different level. So just like Trevor, Corey hasn't really ever commented on his relationship with Megan. So I'd love to know where the authors got that information. Again, could have come from Megan? Could have come from Megan's camp or those close to Megan? Somebody has been speaking to Finding Freedom that is very, very close to Megan and Harry. And do we really believe that they didn't get the okay? One thing that sticks out like a sore thumb with regards to this book, and it is, I think, one of the things that the mail on Sunday should really home in on is details about Meghan and Harry's first date. Now they include things like whether they kissed goodnight, what they drank, the fact that they ignored the nibbles on the table and that they were so captivated with each other. How do they know about this? The book says at the end of the evening, which had lasted almost three hours, Harry and Meghan went their separate ways. Despite the palpable attraction between them, there was no goodbye kiss, no expectation, just a hint of something was there that they hoped to see each other again soon. I mean, to me, that sounds exactly like Megsy's writing, doesn't it? All full of word salad and fluff. There was also great detail about their second date, which took place at Nottingham cottage. These included the decor of the house and it goes into detail of the entrance used by staff or those visiting the estate with regards to Kensington Palace that Megan was quickly ushered down a cobbled path of small mused cottages which she later complimented looked so tiny and perfectly appointed with manicure flower boxes and pots that they hardly looked real and then when Harry opened the door the book says there was no large stone staircase or plush red carpet, no crystal chandeliers or double high ceilings, no art having hanging heavily in gold frames or butler's service. Instead, the prince towered in the small hallway with lots of coats hung on hooks and his boots by the door, just like a regular home. How on earth could that have come out unless it was out of Meghan's mouth? unless she's told friends, but it would have to be word for word verbatim, wouldn't it? This is a play-by-play -play from Meghan's mouth, I suspect. 
It also goes into detail about who said I love you first. If anybody is remotely interested, it was Harry. It goes into great detail of their 2016 Botswana holiday, including where they stayed and Megan's bathroom routines. Now, you remember from when I debunked the Finding Freedom, this was the thing that hit the headlines all over, the fact that she peed in the woods. Seriously, I mean, come on. It goes into detail of Prince Harry's relationship with Prince William before and after he met Meghan. Well, that could very well have been detailed from Palace Aid and people that work with them. But the problem that I have there is that those that work within the walls of Buckingham Palace and the monarchy are notoriously tight-lipped unless they get the all clear and the nod to say something or leak something. It's a tight ship. Not much comes out. They say that the book details a report on advice Thomas Markle gave Meghan Markle about money management. It says that an account of Prince Harry's first meeting with Doria. It goes into detail of the text message sent between Jessica and Megan. Who else could have had these details unless it was Megan or Jessica? It goes into great detail of Prince Harry's conversation with Thomas Markle. Again, how on earth can anybody know this? When Meghan met Prince William for the very first time, it goes into very specific detail about William's home. And this is something I really don't know how it's been allowed to go to print like this, because surely that in itself is a security breach. It also details Meghan's feelings about finding out that a suit's love scene had found its way to a very, very dodgy site. Goes into details about advice given by the palace community communications team and how Megan felt regarding that communication. It gives details of Harry's daily routine during Christmas time in 2017. It also goes into detail about Megan's relationship with Kate and how Megan felt towards her at the time. How on earth? I mean, I know I keep repeating myself, but these things can only have come from a very select few number of people and they would have caught the nod. It also goes into detail how Harry felt about being photographed in Jamaica in Tom Inskip's wedding. Now I've searched the internet, I can't find any reference to that apart from when the book references. That brings it up but before the book's publication nothing was ever mentioned about Harry felt about being photographed at the wedding because they are quite damaging photos aren't they? Goes into detail about Pippa and James Matthews wedding. It goes into details of Meghan and Harry's holidays to Turkey and Botswana in 2017, including who hosted them and what they ate. This is the most important part, I think, and could very well be one of the issues that the Mail on Sunday really, really clinch onto, and I hope that they do, and that is the book details information about the conversation between Harry and William, about how William felt his feelings about Meghan and the impact of their relationship might very well have. That was one of the major blowouts of this book, was how detailed it was with regards to what was said, how Harry felt. That could have only come from very, very familiar people because I don't think Harry is one to blab, so I don't think it would have come from him. So therefore, it must have come from Megal. Megal? Who on earth is Megal? I mean, Megan. I think I might start in calling her Megal. Anyway, it goes into details about Megan's feelings about how Harry proposed, what she felt about it, how Megan felt about leaving Toronto and to moving to London, how she felt about meeting the Queen for the first time in 2017, Megan's communications with her mum after moving to London. I mean, that's got to have either come from either Megan or Doria, hasn't it? There's no one else that it could have come from. In the book, it also goes into detail about Christmas celebrations in 2017 and how Megan felt when the Duchess of Kent wore that now infamous brooch and how she felt about it and how hurt she was about it and that it was a direct snub. It goes into details about Megan's feeling about a friend Ninaki Pretty speaking to the press about Meghan and how Meghan felt about that. In the book, there's also information about Meghan's face 
faith and private conversation between Justin Welby, who is the Archbishop of Canterbury. I mean, Justin's not going to speak to the media, is he? He's got to come from Meghan, or at least somebody who Meghan told. What Prince Harry said at the altar to his father and Meghan Markle just before the wedding ceremony goes into humongous detail about the wedding itself and details of the couple's visit to Georgian and Miles Lake Como home. Don't even get me started on the massive amount of detail on Tiara Gate because that hit the media in spectacular style and quite frankly didn't make them look very good. Especially the argument between Harry and Angela Kelly because Harry just came off like a pompous ass. Goes into details of Prince Harry and William's estrangement. I mean that has really hit the media hasn't it? And the third bit of really damaging evidence I believe is the fact that it gives details about Meghan's birth plan. Who or what friend would spill that private information when they already know that Meghan herself wanted it to be kept from the media? It also also gives information about private correspondence between Prince Harry and Meghan to their friends after Archie's birth. Details of gifts that Archie received. Prince William and Kate's childcare arrangements for goodness sake. It tells of how Meghan was the one that did the majority of the uploads when Sussex Royal Instagram account was first started and how they both felt about the palace's communication team. They were quite strong words in the book and they were quite unprofessional in my opinion because they actually said that one particular aide wasn't very good so we were going to fire her anyway but she quit goes into information about their living arrangements while they're in Canada at the last part of 2019 before they fled to LA to get out of the pandemic and make sure that they were in the right spot at the right time to get maximum opportunity. Sorry, that's not actually in the book, that particular part. That was my words. But it does go into detail about their house and why they were there and how they felt about being there. It also writes about the Sandringham Summit and what happened how people felt, what people said. I mean, I don't know about you, a lot of information came out about the summit when it all went down. It was like a media scrum, but not much information came out about what actually happened in that room and how Harry feels about his split from the royal family. And then lastly and not leastly, Meghan's feelings about her last engagement as a royal. And you remember, this is the bit where it goes into detail that Meghan gave her last hugs goodbye, including one of the authors of Finding Freedom, i.e. Omid Scooby. There's also an issue that has not made it into this particular 49 points, and it could very well have been the 50th, and that is that Finding Freedom contains several photographs that were originally published on Sussex Royal Instagram feed. Now, the Mail on Sunday have cottoned on to this, and they have pointed out that Meghan has previously complained to the media about its use of these very pictures, but not that the authors of Finding Freedom have used them as well. It says that it infers that Meghan gave the authors permission to republish these images in the book. All in all, I think the 49 elements that the Mail on Sunday have highlighted, some of them, quite a lot of them, yes, they could have come from second parties. They could have come from people who know people, or they could have come from people on the outside of Buckingham Palace, and it is could be pure speculation but surely it is up to Megan's team to deduce and to rectify that matter. They are saying that they did not cooperate with this. They are blatantly saying no we did not do it. Whether they did or not is now up to the court to decide. I know one thing is for sure this is going to get incredibly dirty because it's in the mail on Sunday's best interest to continue with this court case because it generates 
generates clickbait. It generates interest. They know where their bread is buttered. There was an interesting blind on Thursday that said, it's from Crazy Days and Nights, that said, much like the Amber Heard Johnny Depp trial, it looks like the illiterate one, i.e. Megan, and witnesses will have to appear in person for the trial if it does happen. Rather than allowing virtual testifying, it will just give the illiterate one another reason to drop the case. I'd love to know whether or not you think this is going to trial. Do you think Megan will drop the case? Because Omid Scooby will almost certainly, and Carolyn Durant will almost certainly, have to come in on this trial now because their book has been listed as allowing as evidence. It's going to be fascinating. I cannot wait, actually. I know that's kind of like a little bit macabre, but this is what I find fascinating about all of this. It's going to be picked apart bit by bit, and they're going to have to give detailed evidence of how they obtained those sources, that information from that book. And if any of it gets back and linked to Megan, well, that just, it means that this court case is blown up the water and the men on Sunday know this. So I would love to know your thoughts on those 49 elements that the Mail on Sunday have alleged could only have come from Meghan and Harry or those close, very, very close to them. I would love to know your thoughts on all of this. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit the notification bell and also that like button. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of my followers for all the tips and all the emails, DMs that everybody sends to me. It really is greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for watching once again.